Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Um, welcome on behalf of Dumbartonshire Chamber to our finance and funding options for business during COVID-19 seminar. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Stuart Rennie. I am the president of the Dumbartonshire Chamber of Commerce, and um, I'm delighted today to be joined by our speakers, Renata Cook and um, Michael Hughes. So we're just waiting for a couple of people just to come online, I think. Uh, I'm ably assisted today by Philip Briscoe, as uh, always, as our technical guru. So, um, are we ready to go yet? Or should we just get yeah, a couple of I, think, I think we can go ahead. Yeah, hang on, Sir John. Okay. Well, um, I say um, welcome everybody to this afternoon's seminar. This is part of our hashtag Together for Business seminars. And um, we've been running quite a few of these over the last few weeks. Um, and with a view to trying to coming out of lockdown, we are addressing what is possibly one of the most critical questions facing businesses just now, which is cash and wealth management. Um, call me cash management first before you get to wealth management, but there's still a very important thing for everybody to address. Um, I'm delighted to be joined today by Renata Cook of, of Renata Cook Wealth Management. Um, Renata joined the chamber um, recently, um, but has been uh, attended on numerous of these seminars and Zoom networking calls that we have had. Um, Renata um, came to Scotland tw 12 years ago from Lithuania and she is a partner in St. James's Place Wealth Management um, based in West, West George Street when our office is open but currently I think operating out of our, our house in Rob Royston. Um, and Renata will be talking today about wealth management, particularly integration of business um, wealth and personal financial planning. And then she will be the second speaker up today with Michael Hughes of Lincoln Commercial Funding. Um, Michael is talking about, asked him about this, um, and he talked about how to get, his topic is going to be how to get money for your business, either free money or government loans, and particularly with the emphasis on commercial finance. Um, it's very nice of Michael to join us because he should have been up, up the West Coast and on the West Coast, on the North Coast 500 on holiday just now, but of course that's gone for a burden in the current climate. So um, without further ado, um, I'd just like to take time um, to hand over to Renata and let her start her talk. Thank you, Renata. You have to unmute, unmute yourself, Renata. Uh, good afternoon again. I was just talking to myself for a moment. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. I really hope that this session will help you and give you a few tips uh, which will further help your business going in the future. And also, if you will have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. I'm very glad that I have joined the Dubartashi Chamber of Commerce and the Movement Together for Business because it gave me so much uh, in regards to business connections and network. And I would really, if you're not a member yet, please join us. So what I would like to do, I'll just quickly share my presentation. It won't be too many slides. So you don't need to worry about that. Let me just start the slideshow. I'm using two screens, so I'm not looking to, to the sky, but just wanting to make sure you can properly see me. Okay, so once again, good afternoon. As Stuart said that I run my own company, Renata Cook Wealth Management, and I help small and medium businesses entrepreneurs, property investors, and individuals with financial planning and advice uh, in order to create financial freedom and security. I have been self-isolating for three months already. And as a small business myself, I have wondered about these same things. Uh, so probably you are wondering as well. So this is why I have put together a webinar session together with Michael about business finance and funding and during the COVID-19. So we can share our knowledge and hope that you will find few things uh, useful for you. And it has been a roller coaster of thoughts and emotions that I have gone through as a small business owner and working mom. 
What keeps me going? My clients who I can call and follow up with them. It doesn't always uh, end up talking about the business, but just really following up and building those relationships which I have with my clients. And I met uh, Michael at one of the networking events. And this is how our kind of friendship and relationship has started. We haven't done any business together, but at the same time, uh, small business to small business, I'm always looking to help out and also build that future because we never know when we can have the need for additional services. So this webinar will be simply about providing you with clarity and expert advice that cuts through the noise uh, to help you to make more informed decisions in this rapidly moving and challenging time. So it's all about connecting like-minded uh, like individuals, small business owners in one forum, also sharing knowledge and being open about concerns, challenges and opportunities and supporting each other to help make more informed decisions and making new connections. All ideas for further sessions, please let us know and the, the Watershed Chamber of Commerce, they are always looking for, to help you. So if you will have any feedback, please let us know. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today. So it will be all about the COVID-19 impact on business. Uh, so as well as serious implications for people's health, COVID-19 has significantly impacted businesses and economy. COVID-19 pandemic continues to evolve and now it's time to shift focus uh, to efforts that support a return to work while addressing needed changes in the months ahead. So actually that's one of the Dombartosha Chamber of Commerce. They just recently made, uh, had a survey and 75% of people who responded are looking for guidance about how to safely return to work and hope that very shortly we will be we will have a much clearer picture. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the second uh, phase of the lockdown. So from the 18th of June, we would, should be allowed to meet one person and let them in the house. So that makes me happy in regards to business. And today I will just very shortly also look over the markets and then talk about the personal finance, how that intertwines with the business finance you have. And after that, I will pass you to uh, Michael Hughes, who is an expert in the funding for businesses. And also he has few other options, which I cannot give you, but he can help you with not just funding and government funding, but also how to finance uh, ongoing business and the cash flow. Okay, so stock markets with will always have ups and downs in the short term and sometimes the fall can be significant. So why I'm talking about the stock markets because it is just as your company, everyone has been impacted. So doesn't matter how big falls we have, we always are going up. So you can look at the Black Monday in 1987, we had a big crash and then it uh, lifted itself up. So I don't think that coronavirus will have too drastic of an impact and going forward, uh, the, they are talking, the experts are talking about you form uh, financial growth. So hopefully we will get there. Okay. So what I will do today as well, I will share, probably I'll email them to Philip and if Philip could share the two documents, which we'll talk about whatever it takes summary matrix. So that's all about the government support and the key links and also COVID-19 business owners advisory service and two week action plan. So I will share them with you. Uh, you're free to share with anyone uh, in your contacts and hopefully that will work well for you. So as I said, I haven't made too many slides because I think that just make, having so many uh, conversations over Zoom and so many chats, it's just uh, sometimes too much information makes us a bit bored. So we want to make sure that this presentation is sharp and touching all the main points. So 
in regards to the businesses, you are running your own business and I do understand all the concentration now is the cash flow, the clients, the service, trying to go back to normal as we can call it normal. But what I would like to ask you to do as well, before we get to the next stages, please sit down and look over your own finances because looking at the mortgages, protections, insurance, speak to your financial advisor because I'm sure probably 50%, if not more of you have the financial advisor. It's a perfect time to talk to them before everything else in the business will completely take over once the lockdown uh, lifts up because I know that we will need more income. We will try to uh, drive in the business. So if you will want to, to have a chat, uh, my contact details will be here. And I'm very gladly would like to introduce you to Michael Hughes, uh, who is an expert in finance and funding. And I actually started the business leader sessions uh, and webinars, which I'll be kindly dealing together with the Demantoshe Chamber of Commerce. So in July, I will have a webinar about the business protection information only but if you want to hear from us just follow the Dubai Chamber of Commerce. So Michael, Thank the microphone is going over to you. You've set me up as though I've got a magic wand here to give people money but <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Um, great stuff so if I um, am I okay to share my screen just now then? Yep, I'm good. Okay, doke. Uh, we'll put it on. So um, I think um, clearly just now it's a very, very tough time uh, for businesses um, across the country and the situation is changing daily. Um, so even this morning we have a new lenders been authorised for bounce back and sea bills. Today, I'm not going to talk about the, the furlough schemes, but it does end today. So if anyone's getting employees they want on that scheme, uh, today is the last day you can do that. Um, what I, I'm going to sort of reflect on is um, probably like myself, we've all been on a number of webinars um, and discussed with a lot of people. And it's very, very clear that over the next three to six to 12 months, uh, they're going to be crucially important for businesses um, and the economy. And I'm a member of a number of groups that are trying to lobby where the government um, actually put the focus of, of the funding. I am going to talk about free money. Uh, I think that's really, really important. Uh, I'll talk about government-backed uh, money and some alternative solutions that businesses may want to look at. Some businesses need money now, today, uh, and some will need it as we get back to normal. So uh, hopefully I'll recognize that. A couple of points. Uh, I'm not recommending anything specific for anybody. Um, I couldn't and wouldn't do that until um, we uh, had a one-to-one -one discussion, so I'll, I'll share with you some schemes, um, and if you're interested, you can come back to me for free advice. Um, neither am I approving or disapproving um, of any of the government schemes, so um, I think they're all well-intended, um, and everyone's got views of them. I think the best rule of thumb before I start, if anyone's thinking of borrowing money, the best rule of thumb to adopt here is that if the cost of borrowing that money is lower than the benefit it gives to your business, then it's probably um, a, a good idea. For example, um, if you were entering an invoice financing scheme and it was costing you 5%, and with that money, you could use it to sell goods and services at 15%, it feels like um, it would be a positive thing to do for your business. So. If I can just get, yeah. So I'll do an introduction to myself and the business. I'm going to talk about free money, government backed money, uh, and alternative uh, options for you. So our business is based in Lanarkshire. Uh, we're a commercial finance brokers. Um, we serve the, the whole of Scotland. Um, we're regulated by the FCA and I'm business partner with the White Rose Finance Group. What that gives me and our clients is access to a panel of over 300 lenders, uh, a variety of products, uh, a back office uh, uh, and some expertise. So even though I've had 35 years in business, if I've not come across something, 
I'll find somebody who has. So we've got, we, we, we can always advise on something. Um, we find money and financial support for businesses, property developers, our advice is free. Um, I set up the business last year. Um, so my personal background is I've been a director um, for a number of businesses within retail, such as Asda, Tesco. I've worked in Australia with Coles. I've been most recently, I was a chief executive of a Glasgow-based company called City Facilities Management, where I looked after the UK and Europe. Uh, last year, I started my own consultancy, and as part of that, I've branched out into commercial funding so that I can give the full package of support to the SME community. Um, my view is a broker's to do the shopping for you. So my role is to work with you to understand what you need and then go to the marketplace and do the shopping to get the best possible deal. Uh, and my view, that's what a broker should be doing for you. So moving on to free money, first of all. So we've got the, um, the Self-Employed Income Support Scheme. Um, it was launched uh, back in uh, end of March, April. It's just been extended uh, through to August 2020. So this is free money. Um, however, uh, it is taxable. So if you receive this money, um, you will have to uh, pay tax on that if you're paying tax. One important thing about uh, this scheme is that you must make the claim personally. A number of businesses and individuals have got agents that do their tax returns for them. Even if you do have an agent doing your tax return for you, they cannot place the claim for you. So you must do this yourself and you need you to use your unique taxpayer reference number, your UTR which if you don't have, your agent or accountant should have. Um, the, the scheme was for the first three months, uh, it gave a grant of up to seven and a half thousand pounds, which was based on 80% of your trading profits. Going forward for the next three months, it's reduced. It's to up to 70% of your trading profits and up to just over six and a half thousand pounds grant. But the Chancellor did say that was in line with the reductions he had made uh, in the, the furlough scheme. I guess the difference being that in the furlough scheme, your employer had the option to top up. If you're self-employed, you might not have that option if you're not actually uh, working. However, um, that scheme is now available and it runs through to the end of August. The newly self-employed hardship fund was aimed at self-employed people who did not qualify for uh, the, the scheme above. Um, so that scheme is run by the local authorities. And in each one of these, incidentally, you'll get a copy of a slide. You'll see there's a hyperlink, which will take you directly through to the relevant government website. When you click on this one, it'll take you through to a page that shows you a list of uh, councils and you, you have local authorities and you just click on your own local authority and you make the claim. This is for people who cannot access any other COVID-19 support. Uh, you've lost revenue due to COVID-19, you're self-employed after the 6th of April 19. So it's a one-off payment of £2,000 and despite my research and I'm, <coughs> I'm hoping this changes, um, I can't see any evidence of this being extended. So it seems to be it's a one-off payment within that period. If it is extended uh, before I issue the slides, I will update that. But at this stage, I cannot see any evidence of that. We then come across to the non-domestic rate relief and business support grant. And my comment there about Barnett Consequentials, um, what... Any public money, any money that comes back for public expenditure in Scotland is subject to a formula known as the Barnett formula. What that means is for each pound that the Scottish taxpayers pay into the Westminster pot, we get X back. Maybe more than a pound, less than a pound, but there's a formula there that determines um, what we get back. The importance of that means that when you listen to the Chancellor talk on television about all the things they're going to do, when he comes up to talk about something that is a devolved matter, what he says doesn't, do not, does not apply in Scotland. Um, 
what the Scottish government says is what applies in Scotland. So by the end of April, Scotland had received 2.25 billion uh, to put into these schemes, and they've already allocated, not spent, but allocated 2.3 billion. So effectively what we've got, they have earmarked for um, the relevant schemes. Point number one in the slide there will tell you the amount of times this scheme has been updated. You'll see the most recent one is the 8th of June. So there's a, there's a constant review, which is quite right. Um, as they see the impact and the effect of the schemes, they are adjusting them. And I'll talk you through some amendments they've just made. Um, so 100% uh, rate relief is available to all retail, hospitality and leisure. All non-domestic properties will get 1.6% uh, relief. And then on top of that, there are some grants available. And these are the ones that have just uh, changed. So the business support grant, <clears throat> which is up to 25,000 pounds on the first property um, and uh, up to 18,000 on any subsequent ones, where the rateable value of the property sits between 18,000 and 51,000. For smaller businesses whose rateable value is uh, up to 18,000, uh, there's a smaller business grant available for retail, hospitality and leisure. Now, this week it has been extended to applications that include businesses that occupy shared office space or shared industrial units where the landlord is the taxpayer, or sort of the rate payer, um, and also extended to bed and breakfasts that are not registered for non-domestic rates relief. So there's been an extension there. Equally, they've expanded point number five. This week, they've expanded the banding for multiple properties. So it was 35,000 to 51,000. They've now expanded the bandings up to 500 thousand pounds for multiple properties that's quite a significant change but clearly they're reacting to feedback that says where the, where the need is, is, is the greatest so um there's a link there that talk you through that and also will take you through to um, the relevant application forms on the website I've also highlighted some other useful websites. Now, the first two, the Scottish Government Business Support uh, Finder and the Scottish Parliament Information Centre, they do share some uh, similarities. I found the second one easier to follow and easier to read than the first one, but it, it's personal choice. They cover the same schemes, um, but you may have a personal choice for one or the other. And then the UK government have published a Ready Reckoner. And really, all you do is you're answering a series of questions that are posed to you. And as you get to the end of the questions, up pops the answer of what your business qualifies for. Please remember that that bottom one is for UK. So there may be some Scottish government or local authority schemes that are not included in it that you would need to um, add into it. But it's still quite useful just to answer half a dozen, 10 questions, and it'll allow you uh, to see what um, you could qualify for your business. The next one is government backed money. And this is where um, I am spending the most of my time um, in terms of trying to navigate for businesses. It should be fairly self-explanatory and it should be fairly easy. Unfortunately, it's not. £330 billion was set aside uh, for these schemes. To date, £35 billion has been lent. So what that tells you is that there's no shortage of money uh, in the scheme. Um, but uh, as I'll show you in a sec, there's a number of businesses that are failing to get the support they need. Be sure you can pay any redebt, uh, repay any debt before you take it on. If I can just explain, that, that this slide will explain why there's only 50% success rate on some of the schemes. So the lending market is split into different camps, okay? So you get a tier one, which tends to be high street banks uh, who have a higher underwriting criteria, but they will give you uh, probably the most favorable rates. So they're the large lenders, the high street banks. And generally, what I find is a lot of businesses, 
their one and only relationship with any lender is with their bank, who happens to be a high street bank. High street banks underwriting criteria is very, very strict. So it may well be that even if you bank with them, you wouldn't qualify for a loan. Then you get tier two, and in tier two, you get where you've got funding circle, people with funding circle who are peer-to-peer -peer lenders. You're beginning to get some challenger banks and some specialist lenders. It would be fair to say that their underwriting criteria is slightly more relaxed, but for that privilege or for that risk that they're taking is the rates are slightly higher. Then you've got tier three. Now in tier three, you've got very niche specialist lenders. You'll have lenders like Hope Capital only do bridging. You've got some lenders that only do asset finance. And you've got other lenders who have got, again, an even more relaxed criteria for uh, lending. They're willing to take more of a risk. But for that, you're going to pay a, a little bit more. Now, for these government schemes, that might not be the biggest issue in the world. I've put a hyperlink at the bottom of that one. It's a Scottish Enterprise link through to a video that explains a guide to debt and borrowing. I thought it was very useful. It's a three minute video uh, and it's definitely worth looking at. Now, if you look at that field that I've put on the slide there, there's about 20 lenders there. Remember, I'm dealing with 330, so it gets really, really complex. And even with the CBILS loans, there are, I think it's 85 lenders that have now been approved. So it's a complex environment. The first scheme to talk about is the bounce back. Now, the attraction to the bounce back scheme is that it's 100% guaranteed to the lender. The borrower is still liable for 100% of the debt, but the lender's got 100% guarantee. So the lenders aren't taking any risk on this because even if the business defaults, the government are backing it. Every lender offers the same rate, which is 2.5%. There are no fees and no personal guarantees required. So on this scheme, there are 21 lenders and there's a link through to them all. The lenders will make the decision. If they say no to you, you can apply to the others. You can work your way through all 21 if you want. Uh, but if, if, if someone were to refuse you, you can uh, say you can apply to another one. Now, in this one, it's a self-certification that if you are eligible, and there's the eligibility criteria, you should get this. And if you go to your own bank, who you already have the relationship with, you should get it within a matter of 24 to 48 hours. But, so it's really, this scheme is all about the eligibility. It's not underwritten in the same way that nobody's checking your ability to service the debt you're self-certifying that. There are some, I had, I had a client last week who uses a personal bank account for their business and were refused a loan. Now, in that circumstance, that's the lender's choice. Uh, some lenders insist you use a separate bank account for your business, most of them do, but some will lend against a personal bank account. So there are circumstances where you are eligible, you won't get it, but uh, you can look elsewhere. The one causing the biggest issue just now is C-bills. Now, I'm going to show you this slide, busy slide, but look at the top right hand red box. Overall approval rating is at 50%. Now, if like me, you assume that everybody who applies for a C-bills loan needs one, why else would you lumber your business with debt? Um, only 50% are getting it. Look at the bottom in the white boxes at the volume going through the tier one lenders. Okay, That might be an indication as to why people are being refused. What the trick is here is to try and match the business and the requirement with the right lender. I'm going to share uh, another screen with you, hopefully. And this screen is going to, if it comes up, uh, can you see that screen with all the lenders on it? So th this shows you, this is the British Business Bank, and this shows you all the lenders that have been approved to lend money under the C-Bills umbrella. As you will see, there's high street banks, you just click into them. There are specialist lenders that only do invoice financing. 
Um, there's tier three, tier four, tier two, and tier three lenders. Um, and you know, there's some lenders that only lend in parts of the country, uh, certain parts of the country. So people at NEL, it's only the northeast of England. So you, what you find there, it's a very, very complex picture in terms of um, the amount of lenders um, that are being approved. And what's happening just now is people who would not normally qualify for a tier one lender are automatically going to that tier one lender to apply for a CBILS loan. They're also perhaps applying for the wrong product. CBILS loans are available in a number of different guises, which I will cover off. Some are more secure to the lenders than the other. So let me talk through that. So 50K to 5 million pounds, 80% government backed. And this is why this is a, a, an issue. The lenders are still going through the full financial underwriting process because they're taking a risk on that 20%. So government back 80%, the borrower still rem remains 100% liable for the debt. First 12 months are, are interest free or the interest is paid by the government as are the setup fees. Some and most of them are also offering a capital repayment holiday. So in a number of instances, you can take a CBILS loan out and pay nothing for a year, uh, which is pretty good. Now, it can be taken in a number of guises. This is really, really important. It can be taken as a straightforward term loan, okay? Or it can be taken as ass asset financing, both of a maximum of six years that you can repay over. If you were to take it as asset financing or refinancing, you have the security of the asset. That will help the application rather than an unsecured loan. It can be taken as an overdraft or as invoice financing. Again, your invoice financing has an asset, which is the invoice that you have sent to your, 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 your customer. There's no personal guarantee below 250 and above it, it's, you can only take a 20% uh, of the capital guarantee, which makes sense because 80% has already been backed. Importantly, the interest rate on this one varies quite significantly from lender to lender. It is available till the end of September. That is under, under review. Um, and I'm sure if it's working, if it's money's going to the right place and there's some left, it will be extended. There's now over 80, I think 85 from tier one right through. That link there will take you through to the page that I just showed you, which shows you all the lenders. Importantly, you cannot have a bounce back loan and a C-bills, but you can switch. So if you've, if you've already taken a C-bills loan and it's under 50,000, you can switch that to a bounce back loan and get the benefit of the lower interest rate. Likewise, if you've taken a bounce back loan, but you now need more than 50,000, you can convert the bounce back loan into a C-bills and borrow more money but you cannot have both. Significantly with this one, you can be eligible, you can, but still be refused by the lender. I had a client this morning who's perfectly eligible, caught in the eye of the storm of, of coronavirus. Their importers have stopped importing and their client is closed. You could not argue, um, but um, they were refused by two lenders. So viability will be lender specific, and this is the part where it really is important. You should go to your bank, first of all, try and get advice and, and, and apply. But if not, and you need advice, please uh, feel free to come to me for free advice on that. Um, sorry, one last thing I will say on the Seabills loan. When it was launched, uh, one of the criteria was that you could not refinance existing debt. You can now refinance existing debt in certain circumstances, and I will cover a few of them off. Moving on to this one, it's uh, the digital development loan. This is a Scottish, -backed, Scottish government backed loan for businesses registered in Scotland. It is interest free, which makes it very attractive. Um, there are no setup fees, and equally, if you want to pay it off early, there are no repayment fees, and you can spread it over five years. Um, the loan must be used to improve digital capacity, capability, or skills. The reason I put this one on here, if you think about what everyone's talking about, working from home, uh, what, running your business from home, or getting your employees to work from home, Perhaps this digital development loan will help you set that business up 
uh, in order to um, get the balance right between uh, using the, the working from home ability we now all have on Zoom um, and uh, balance that with office work. So um, any business looking for a loan to develop a digital capability, I think that's a really attractive one in terms of the terms. Um, I can't recall exactly how much has been put in for that for the government, but um, uh, it, that, that particular loan was launched before COVID-19, and I don't see any end to it, so that one's there for the taking. The, the one that has been launched is the, the, the Future Fund, and this one's open till um, September 2020. Now, this is a convertible loan. What that means is that the amount you borrow will be converted into shares, equity in your company. So how this one works is, one, you must already previously have raised equity funding of up to £250,000, and two, you must be able to just now match the amount the you apply for. So if you apply for 200000 you must have a backer to give you another 200000 what happens then is at the next round of equity funding, your company is valued and the amount you have borrowed is converted into equity and shares at a 20% discount. Okay, but as you can see already, 53 companies have been granted uh, 56 million pounds. From memory, there is about uh, 200 million pounds set aside for this. So. Um, they're well on their way to uh, delivering that. Available up until September. Um, and um, so, as I said, you must have um, already raised at least £250,000 and your shares cannot be traded on any equity market. Okay, and the links are there for you. Anyone involved in house building, they've also launched the Scottish Government, a £100 million fund uh, for liquidity support for house builders. If there's a turnover of less than £45 million, you can apply for a loan up to a maximum of 25% of your turnover with a 12 to 24 month payment term. Um, so this is only available to companies, house builders, who have been refused all and any other COVID-19 funding support. Um, but it is one that is proving quite popular as the construction industry gets back underway. Okay, I want to talk through some other alternatives that you may want to consider for your business going forward. So invoice financing is one. This can be taken as a CBILS facility. So you would get the benefit of uh, the government paying setup fees and uh, interest of the first 12 months, and you may get a, a, a repayment holiday. There are three key types of invoice financing that I'll just explain to you. One is factoring, one is discounting, and one is spot factoring. So the difference is this. Factoring is the most popular of them all, okay? If you're in a business-to-business -business environment and you invoice a client, you have to wait 30, 60, or 90 days, this could be suitable for you. Factoring is where the lender, the factor, takes control of your ledger, and they will issue up to 90% of the invoice value that, uh, that, that you issue to your clients within 24 hours. What's fundamentally critical in factoring is that they're controlling your ledger. What that means is it's visible to your customer because it is the factor that is asking for the money. What happens is they give you up to 90% of the invoice value and they then give you the balance, less the fees, once the client pays. Okay, that is the most popular, straightforward form of invoice financing. That's quite good for uh, small businesses who maybe don't have people working on the ledger, um, so uh, dedicated people on that, that might work well for them. If you have uh, a team working on invoices, invoice discounting might be more suitable for you. That is where you retain control of the ledger. It's invisible to your customers in most instances, and uh, the facility is still given to you as you raise your invoices, but you then chase the payment, um, and you, pay the, the, you obviously pay the fees to the lender direct. So the difference between those two is one, uh, the ledger's managed for you, 
and discounting you manage it. Spot factoring is where you choose an invoice or some invoices from your total and you raise invoice financing against them. That is normally quite useful for businesses that operate in a seasonal industry or sector where they've got a big demand coming up that they need to buy stock for or they're issuing invoices before their client gets the sales. That can be quite um, a useful one. They can work out cheaper than an overdraft and the fact they can be taken as a Seabills facility makes them worthy of consideration. The other one that is worthy of consideration here is asset refinancing. So asset financing itself is, uh, is a way of funding uh, <coughs> your business growth. You buy assets for your business. But if you have existing assets that have equity in them, you can refinance them under the CBIL scheme. Now, what that means is you can use the equity that sits in those assets, plant, machinery, vans, that type of thing, um, to release cash, or you can extend the loan terms and reduce the payments. Um, so if you've got valuable assets in your business and there's equity in them, that can be a very useful way of raising, of improving cash flow um, for your business. Another one is uh, merchant services cash advance. So this is for businesses that take payments through a card terminal, okay? So you can borrow up to your average monthly card takings, and then the repayments on that going forward flex up and down with your sales, your, your, the, the, with the amount of business you do through that card terminal. So generally it would be the repayment would be a fixed percent. So let's say uh, you borrowed a month's takings from your card terminal and you agreed to pay back 8% a month. Well, clearly that 8% in real money and cash terms fluctuates. If you have a quiet month and your turnover goes down, you're paying less. And then if you've got a busy month where your turnover goes up, you're paying more. So, but the, 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 the shape and the flexibility of that can suit some businesses. That's not available under the CBILS scheme. Another option is trade finance. So this is a revolving credit facility, similar to an overdraft. So you may have a forward order or a forward forecast for your business that you need money to fund it before you get money from your customers. So up to 100% finance is available. So if you have an order for goods and services or if you have forecast, you can borrow to fund that. You can buy it, particularly suitable for manufacturing and wholesaling, where they tend to buy the stock in before they produce it or before they sell it. Um, and wholesaler and seasonal businesses where they would buy a lot of stock in before that gets through the, the, the full chain. And the final one I'm going to cover off is recruitment finance. And you know, there's a number of recruitment agencies I, I'm speaking to who supply labor. Um, and they have to pay that labor before the client pays their invoices. And how this works is it integrates payroll and billing systems. So as the payroll is run, the invoice is produced and within 24 hours you have the money. So again, it's similar to the invoice financing where um, it's, this is linked to the payroll, but the invoice goes out and uh, your business is able to collect 100% of the value minus the fee within 24 hours without having to wait until the client pays. Uh, what's useful about this one it is available on a one month rolling contract basis, which means you can stop it fairly rapidly. You're not committed for a long time. So there are some options that are um, causing, shall we say, conversations and discussions ongoing as people look for the answer as to how they can fund their business. Um, some might be for you, some might not. What I would say is that if your business, if you think you need to improve your cash flow or fund your business, you should have a conversation uh, with somebody, either a broker, your bank manager, financial advisor, before your accountant, before you do that, just to ensure it is the right solution for you. I'm quite happy to talk to anybody. As I say, advice comes free. There's no commitment. Um, email, phone number, LinkedIn, or we can have a, a Zoom and a coffee, as it seems to be the case nowadays. Hopefully, one day soon, we can have a real coffee where we can buy each other coffee again. So um, I'm happy to move on if anyone's got any questions.
Um, and I'll hand back to Philip. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, Renata, I think, has got a couple more slides to share. So if we just go back to Renata for a second, that would be great. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. I just really want to do a quick summary uh, to talk what we discussed. So let me just very quickly. Oh, Zoom is covering my screen. Okay. So all I want to say from all the information you got today and looking forward to do in regards to your business and personal finance, make sure that you do take that time to sit down and define what support you really need for the business and personal because we are just like hamsters in a wheel running and trying to do business and forget to take that time to sit down and review everything. Also, you need to think of what is working for you for the coming weeks and months and what support you would need. Maybe there is some contact who could help you or introduce you to that help and support you need. Make sure you access the support that is around you. Start, start with the government and if you haven't done something yet, speak to your accountant, speak to your financial advisor or uh, Michael who can help you to access those funds. And sorry, also work through these support mechanisms and leverage those uh, that are appropriate for you. And cash is a king. Maintaining liquidity is the key. So make sure that you talk to your clients, your customers, that they would be able to make the payments on time. Or if they are not able, just talking about the agreeing on the dates, because quite a few people currently are now on furlough and or possibly the cash flow is lower, but they are still able to pay, it just sometimes they don't want to. So just following with that, I think that could be a good way to start. Also a risk register uh, approach. It's a great way to stress uh, test your current plan or frame, or frame the needs uh, for the contents of the plan if you do not have one. So all, uh, the risk register is all about thinking about the risks about your business, your employees, your clients, your suppliers. So just kind of listing that out and reviewing that weekly just to see where, uh, which areas you should concentrate on to make sure that the business is running smooth. Mm -hmm. And also review your policy and check with the insurance broker if you need confirmation of the type of insurance you have purchased because so many uh, companies either have insurance, it may not be in line with current liabilities or you may not have that in place. And it's all with the chamber, it's all about leadership and helping each other. So the five attributes of effective leadership and volatile and certain complex ambiguous times are visibility, sensible, considered and prag pragmatic response, positivity and frequency in communication, authenticity and integrity, and also care and empathy. So don't be shy to ask or shout about yourselves because for me it's been really a time of discovery these last three months and I got so much uh, support and help from other businesses and it's just been really, really good time. Uh, but also being mindful of those in all of your businesses, uh, both with colleagues, employees, and with external contracts and suppliers will ensure that you maintain a sense of calm and measured leadership through, throughout the duration of the crisis. So thank you very much. That's our presentations are now over and I will pass back to Philip. And if you do have any questions to myself or Michael, we're more than happy to answer. That's great, Renata. Thanks very much indeed. Um, really just a case of opening it up to everyone now. If anyone has any questions, uh, if you want to either physically raise your hand or virtually raise your hand, then we'll come to you. Clearly, it was an excellent presentation because we don't have any questions. <laughs> I have one for oh, possibly for Renata. Um, it's um, just in terms of um, personal pensions. Um, somebody said the, the stock market pretty much went into meltdown at the, the start of the um, uh, at the start of the crisis and at the start of lockdown. It was probably quite depressing if you started looking at what your 
the value of your personal pension was, particularly if it was invested in the stock market. Um, but um, there's a great um, phrase by Warren Buffett that nobody, you only find out who is, who's swimming naked when the tide goes out. So the tide has gone out and it's costly. Is it now a time to invest if you have spare cash? That's always the, 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 the interesting point. And do you think it's a useful time to start doing a pension review, particularly if the market is low? From my point of view, and I'm looking after, yes, uh, it was the time when everything went down. But yesterday, I just reviewed my clients' uh, pensions and investments, and they are back at the level they were, or some of them also came back into the plus. So that makes me happy. And also, I would definitely advise to review your pensions, review your investments, not just to see that how they, they are done in the past but also to make sure that you're at the at the level of risk where you want to be because so many people they invest years ago and now the risks are changing and it, you might be in a too risky portfolio but just from the personal experience so we invested just uh, a month ago 20,000 into Anisa currently is 20,400 so over 2% return over two months of course, I cannot promise any future uh, interest and past doesn't tell you about the future, but if you do have spare cash after all of the expenses, I think it's a very good time to invest because you are buying cheap. And always remember, it's not the time, uh, not timing the market, it's the time of in the market which matters when you do your investments. Thanks for that, very comprehensive. Um, does anybody else have any, I see, I see, sorry, we've got a couple of, um, there's quite a few familiar faces on the call, but there's a couple that I am possibly not familiar with, which are both Tim and Anne. So hello to you and uh, welcome if you haven't been on one of these before. Um, do you want to just say a few words about yourselves? Um, just uh, how, you, how you find, we're all, always particularly keen as a chamber to find out how people cared about these things, whether it's through social media, which Philip runs, or whether you recommended by somebody to come onto the call or something like that. Um, Tim, would you mind saying something? Thanks. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, both Renata and Michael. Very, very uh, useful information. And uh, I'll be sure to try and set up a quick one-to-one uh, -one with you both to be able to find out a little bit more about what I can do in my circumstances. I'm actually... Um, in South Africa right now. I'm in the very early stages of building a property portfolio. Um, and I was just wanting to, to figure out what I potentially would be able to, to borrow and whether there's something, any support for someone in my circumstances. And I believe it was uh, Marianne and Paul uh, at Kingsmith Property that, that got me involved with you guys. And I'm also involved with um, BNI. So, Thank you very much for your time. And that's just a little bit about me. That, um, I'll be coming back to the UK once flights open again. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I'll reach out to you both over email and uh, hopefully be able to have a quick chat with you both. So thank you very much for your time. Very, uh, very useful. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tim. And yes, uh, I've been uh, in contact with Marianne and Paul and I actually referred a few clients of mine to them. And I think it's just building your power team is very important, especially when you talk about the business and property. Okay. The other person, uh, and I probably have met every, and the world's worst with faces, but Anne, do you want to say hello, hello to something? We've got a very nice photo of you, or I've got a very nice photo of you on my screen, but we can't actually see you. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, I was going to say, there's two Anne's <laughs> first year. Oh, yeah. Anne Nelson, sorry, I know, because I, I, Hi guys. Hi Anne. <laughs> am, I, am I off mute? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Hi. <laughs> no, I was doing other work as well at the same time, so that's why I had, didn't have my camera on. Um, could I just ask Michael a quick question? Um, regarding the, the, the funding you said had been extended for um, bed and breakfasts for the hospitality section, I'm not in the hospitality myself, but my sister-in-law is, and she runs an Airbnb. Would that potentially extend to her? Uh, can you hear me okay? 
Um, it could do. Um, a a, a BNB is obviously is, is a, a Airbnb um, is more serviced accommodation, um, mm -hmm. but potentially it's, it's it's not typical bed and breakfast as as we know. Unless she does bed and breakfast, doesn't she? She does bed and breakfast. Yes, that's part of it. Yeah, well, there's every possibility. Uh, uh, every individual needs to go through the process to find out to qualify. But yeah, absolutely. There's right. um, she's she's in the catchment that would that could qualify if she's doing right. bed and breakfast. Yeah. Okay, that's great. She's in Sky as well, so yeah, you know they're kind of. I think I think the feeling I get is that the Scottish government are beginning to realise that some businesses are going to come out of this. I'll, I'll use the word okay, you know, they'll get back up and they'll, they'll, they'll get back to other one. Other other sectors are going to go through a, a punishing time and hospitality is one of those that is, you, you know, until such times as we can all live our life the way we lived it before, then the hospitality sector is going to struggle to get back to an even keel. So mm -hmm. what what they have been doing is constantly updating the their, their grant schemes and you see more and more focus going towards those areas. So, uh, listen, um, you want a view, they need a lot more than they've got, but but yes, so so uh, bed and breakfast and caravans, uh, people who make an income from uh, caravans, uh, et cetera, are qualify. What they've done just now is they've said, you don't have to be a non-domestic rate payer to, in order to qualify. So they've removed that threshold. So really, in theory, Anyone who runs a bed and breakfast should be inquiring would be my would be my take on it. Okay, thanks very much for that. Are you providing a link to all the slides after this? Yeah, what I'm going to yeah. do is, so I'm going to send the slides to Philip, who's going to distribute them uh, in whatever way. The links, I, I, I've put the hyperlinks throughout my slides, so all you have to do is open the slide and click on the link and you go straight through to the relevant sites. Yeah, what Thanks. we'll do okay, is we'll, we'll get them onto the Chamber uh, website at some point over the next day or so. We're under the COVID-19 um, Together for Business Hub on our website at thebarnsachamber.co.uk. But there will also, also be a playback of the whole webinar put onto uh, our social media channels probably later on this evening if you want to replay, replay any of the sections. Can I just say I work for Eastern Bartonshire Council, I delivered the Business Gateway project but, but, and thank you to Michael and Renata for a really comprehensive presentation. Just a little um, update on the, 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 these grants that are administered by the Council. The closing date has been announced as the 10th of July so Anne if you speak to your, I think it was your sister, um, you know, tell her to apply sooner rather than later. It was originally to be the 31st of March next year, but they've brought it back quite significantly. So the closing date is the 10th of July. Oh no, that's great. I'll get her to do it this week. <laughs> Thank you. So can I just jump in uh, before Stuart closes the meeting, um, just to give people a heads up on the, some of the future events uh, you may want to join. So tomorrow, at 10 o'clock, we've got health and well-being at work, the new normal. Um, so if you come along to that one. We also have our weekly networking with purpose event on Tuesday, every Tuesday morning at 9.30. And we also have our weekly business support forum every Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You'll get all these if you follow us on social media. Facebook is facebook.com, the Marcher Chamber. Twitter's twitter.com Twitter Chamber, and they'll all be on there for you to read uh, with links to register and with that I'll, if there's no other questions I'll hand back to Stuart to close up the meeting thanks very much okay thanks very much Philip um, and in particular um, can I say thank you to our two speakers today to Renata and Michael for a very comprehensive rundown of uh, available finance um, I think it, it's it's critical for businesses just now to have to be able to access finance. Um, and I thought the, the, the presentation was comprehensive on both the pluses and minuses of the various sources available and also the risk approach as highlighted by Renata that you, that you should take. So um, in the non-traditional or possibly now traditional manner, can everybody please um, give uh, on the reactions, can we please have a big hand um, for each of our speakers?
Thanks. And we have to do a, a, a final thing once everybody's hand disappears from this. We have, Philip will take a screenshot. We always end up with a screenshot um, from everybody um, with a thumbs up, and we do that to, to top and tail the presentation. So um, if Philip will count us down on that, maybe just a, yeah, thumb, thumbs up and yeah, say thanks, everyone. Uh, we get three, two, one. Thanks, everyone. Right. Okay, thanks for that. I um, hope to see some of you tomorrow at half past 10 on our mindfulness and hip wellbeing seminar. Um, and good to catch up. Thank you. Bye now. Everyone for joining. Yes. Have a lovely afternoon.